Hi, welcome to this part. We are looking at AWS Certified Developer Associate Real Certification Questions. This is the part 12 of this playlist. In this part of the video, we would cover questions linked with these topics. If you have not gone through parts 1 to 11 of this playlist, please take this opportunity to go through those parts. They have all of the previous questions all of them are latest and relevant questions please do not forget to subscribe and hit the like button it takes a lot of effort to put these contents now let us look at this question first understand the story so here is a story consider this online shopping platform like flipkart so we all know this is just the front end that you are seeing at this point in time. The data from this front end goes into the database like this. This stuff here is the front end and this stuff is the database. See database we always draw using this symbol. So the data moves from your front end like this front end to the database to here this database so what is happening is when the data is sent from this point to this point th this processing takes 15 minutes sometimes in the test environment and the developers are making changes to the entire code to make it faster so what the team is worrying is that the database might fail they want to improve the backend system so that each message is treated in the most scalable manner. See, if you are shopping, okay, like using this website, you are shopping and you put an order and the order execution is taking a lot of time. Like, you know, you are not getting a transaction number. So it is a dissatisfaction to you as a user, as a customer. So we want to improve that experience. Well, these are four options to improve. Which one is the right answer here? Let's figure out. The first one says to use SQSQ. See, the first thing we should remember to move the data from this point to this point, we will need SQSQ, period. See, what moves the data from here to here? Either Kinesis or sqs kinesis is used for real-time movement like iot devices and so on so sqs is left so sqs is a fully managed message service for microservice or distributed systems now what it says here is that sqs is there for sure it will set up ec2 instance to pull the queue okay and process the message as they arrive so like this, okay, it added this EC2 instance here. But I'll tell you the problem is this says most scalable manner. If you just have one EC2 instance, if there are too many messages coming here, this one cannot handle and your system will break. So A is wrong. So B also tells you to use SQSQ, which is perfect. But then it says you use EC2 instances in auto scaling group. That is the difference between A and B. So if you use auto scaling group, you are making it scalable. So these auto scaling groups are logical groups of EC2 instances. Purpose is to create automatic scaling. And this is important. It launches enough instances to meet the desired capacity. Okay, so what does it mean in terms of diagram? For option A, we had one EC2 instance. For option B, there is a whole group of EC2 instances and it will scale up and scale down depending upon the message. If there are too many messages, it will scale so many instances. If there are less messages, it will scale less instances. So B has addressed scalability also. This is my answer. Now let us look at C. The problem with C is 
it is telling you increase lambda timer to 60 minutes and we all know that you cannot go above 15 minutes for timeout of lambda and here you see each message is processing more than 15 minutes so definitely lambda cannot kick in so this is wrong d so this says uh, that you change the app to directly insert the body of the message like the body of the message inside the rdf so it will not have any of these things it will straight away insert the body here so this is not a best practice from an architecture designing perspective you should have a microservice based architecture which loosely couples if you see option d it is an example of tight coupling so this documentation tells you about loosely coupled scenarios okay it can be with compute in our case it is compute so what happens is with this kind of architecture this stuff is spawning compute it adds compute okay and it is loosely coupled in case suppose this ec2 instance fails it will launch another ec2 instance so your application will not go down just because one component failed. please listen to me carefully tightly coupled means if anything any component fails even a single component your application fails this one is an example of loose coupling if one ec2 instance fails the other ec2 instance will take care of the processing hence d is wrong as well okay this was wrong and this was wrong this is my answer option b let us look at the next one so here is a story you have your infrastructure on premises and you want to use CloudWatch. Remember, CloudWatch is an AWS service, but it works with AWS as well as on premises. So, if you don't trust me, you see this it observes AWS resources and applications on AWS and on premises. Now, the question is how should the on prem application, that is this one, use CloudWatch? That is this one. Let's start from bottom and i've already highlighted this answer but start from bottom see this one ssh key to aws we use this you know when you have your laptop or a desktop and you want to connect to aws services so you have to exchange ssh keys if you want to interact with ec2 so you download those keys okay uh, this is not used for specifically you know as a best practice for this purpose so we will mark this answer wrong c says you will you will use iam credentials in the source code so never put the credentials in your source code this is against the best practice in your code you should never put usernames and passwords b says you implement and you a proxy api called three c2 instances see if you do that what you are doing is you are adding another service ec2 okay and now you are increasing your cost always think of a solution which decreases the cost from a cost perspective this is not acceptable a we are left with a and that is the answer why because what we are doing is we want to configure the aws credentials in the application server using sdk which is relatively it is the way forward so this is my final answer now let's look at this question okay do you know github so this is github okay why we use it in the open source world you write your code and then you put it in github you can create your ci cd pipelines so that from the dev the code goes here from here it goes to uh, test boxes production boxes and so on so it says give your code a home in the cloud and this is how you submit your code the advantage is you can build on what has been built suppose you developed a code and i developed a code some third person can use both of our code and enhance it further that is exactly what code build and code commit does but in the aws world so with code build you can build and test code with continuous scaling 
you pay only for the build time that you use and code commit is a version control service hosted by aws so what me you mean by version like today you work on a version and tomorrow someone else wants to pick that whatever you developed so they don't have to go into your computer they will just go to the version control tool pick it from there and if we want we think that okay the next version the changes made is not correct we can roll back to the previous version that is how you do not lose your changes so here the problem statement is the firm wants to generate code prior to the developers pushing it to the main branch before they push it to the main branch what happens in the main branch so if you push it to the main branch it is committed there so that it can be cascaded further to the uat and the test boxes okay so you have to merge the branch or push it to the main branch now which option fits the cost effectiveness the first one says you configure ec2 instance with the code build agent to build the code so we do not configure ec2 for this because the code build agent and it's it's a separate service so this is wrong b says you configure code build jobs on aws for each branch build process so we we do not want to do it for like each branch build because we are looking for main branch so this is wrong C says configure the code build agent to build the code in your local system. So you can build the code. You can use this agent in the local system, build the code, and then cascade it further. D says configure Jenkins plugin for code build to run the code build process. So Jenkins plugin here we don't need because AWS code build is well adapted. Like it already has so many features inside. So this would be my final answer. Now let's look at this question. So suppose you have some game application, okay, and you and I both are playing some games, and uh, what I do you should not see, what you do I should not see. So that is the basic story. Individual users should have access to the gaming data of, should not have access to other players. So I cannot see your data, you cannot see my data, okay. How is this possible? So there are four options. Let's see. First one says you encrypt the game see encryption etc we use with, usually with pii data that is personal and physical data what are these these can be credit card information this can be your ssn information this can be your driver's license and address and name and so on whatever can identify you for example your aadhaar card your passport number okay see gaming data is not is not is not pii and that's why we will not go to do encryption that is a very expensive solution and if you can if you can travel from point a to point b with a maruti suzuki do not buy a ferrari that is what the statement and that's why this is wrong now b says restrict access to specific items based on certain primary key values yes so primary key values may be for example the username or the user id based on that we can restrict uh, those items at the database level itself so this looks correct c says stage data in sqs queues to inject metadata before accessing so you see you can use sqs queue if you have a front end and you want to pass the data to dynamodb we can use that <coughs> but metadata injection will not help you with uh, isolating a user's data this will not help you because see ce solution is incomplete it is not telling you how will it satisfy this requirement hence c is wrong d says you read all the records from dynamodb and discard irrelevant so that means i will extract all the data so i can see your data and so many users data and then i myself will say hey since i'm a very religious person i read some books which are very religious so i will decide i will not see your data so you are trusting on my on me right uh, what if i'm a corrupt guy uh, and i read your data i see your data so this solution will not work because you want to trust me trust an user the system cannot be designed that way this is the right answer please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button it takes a lot of effort a lot of effort to put in these content this brings us to the end of this part in this part we covered questions linked with these topics do not forget to refer previous questions in this playlist all are still relevant latest questions you will definitely pass if you go through these questions stay tuned for more such videos see you in the next part